Welcome back to our Elden Ring lore playthrough. We're going to continue on into the Eternal City of Nokron in search of that sacred treasure that Rani is really keen to get her hands on. Uh, look, you can see uh, there's a sections we saw from over there, right? So deeper in is where that chair crypt is at. Lots of cool structures. Again, just really reminding me... Oh, oops. Really reminding me of... Bloodborne. Just give me just heavy Bloodborne vibes, right? Now, this big old bridge here, like the section we're going through right now is not part of the Eternal City. It's, it just isn't, right? And we can actually see some mimic things right there. But because like there's things with the Clayman where it talks about how they infest the ruins of ancient dynasties. And I mean, there's a section over there too. And with these big old bridges, like you can see them spanning over there. We saw some in lower levels. Is that actually that glowing thing right there? Is that just a star thing? Just a reflection. Yeah, one of those shimmery pieces. And it looks like it probably would have, like, shot off and connected over there. Where it's like a, a word I want to keep saying is, like, Parthenon kind of thing. It's very Greek-looking to me. I don't know that that's the right descriptor for it or not. But that's what I'm thinking, right? Uh, but we do have to kind of work around here. And we can see, what do we find? Ancestral followers. Now, it's different because this is, like, where we first went through. is all along here, the... the the uh, Sifra Riverbank, right? Or Shifra. And the ancestral followers we found there were like spiritual, like they were blue as opposed to what right here. And up on the surface, way over here at these old palace ruins, right? There's a ruined labyrinth, mausoleum complex. And then uh, there should be a sign thing somewhere. I mean, down below is the Einzel River downstream, Ul Palace. I swear there's one that said it was like Ul. Well, maybe I'm like mixing things in somewhere somehow. But there's a bunch of physical ones there, right? And so I wonder what the difference is between like this spot, that one, and then the riverbank down there where they're just like a spiritual form, right? What is the significance of that? Are they projecting themselves in some way? And we can see uh, there is a slightly different one right there. The antlers are different. They're doing some large aura. Now, that aura thing is kind of reminiscent of some of these followers where they had uh, this type of weapon and they could, like, kind of wave it around and it did a big thing, swirly deal around them. But we got a ghost here. Lord of blood, your eminence. I beg you, grant me a seat at the table of your dynasty. Long live the Mogwin dynasty. Long live the Mogwin dynasty. See, isn't it interesting how we're in the ruins of these old dynasties, right? And see how they just like expand all the way around. And then this Mo guy like talking to Vare and his new dynasty. Wait for the, you know, it's it's renewal for it's like usherance, right? But he's like, don't use the thing yet. It's not time yet. We have to wait. He's slumbering beneath or beside the divinity, right? And this guy, he's looking off over there. And he's talking about Lord Mo, give me a seat. I want it, right? Give me one. I'm interested. So, I mean, we haven't been over there yet. But it totally looks like we could go there. But well, we're going to skirt around here. And if we actually look, right, there's these same obelisk things that have the same flame to light as well. So it's like another one of those uh, sections where there was like an ancestral uh, horn follower thing. Ancestral spirit. There's formic rocks. And listen to the singing. Very cool. Gives me big, um, oh, what's it called? A place in Dark Souls 2. It's like a water place. I can't remember the name of it. It's it, kind of miserable. But we're going to avoid that part for now because, like like I said, we're going for the Eternal City, the Sacred Treasure. Look at this place. Look at how you've got these. They remind me of, like, the bodies. Like, you know, you'd see the uh, pictures of and stuff. The, the residents citizens of Pompeii how their bodies were like cast into these forms now my understanding too here recently is that like they the lava didn't make them that way like that was you know the archaeologists and stuff preserving them but that's the same kind of vibe I'm getting here right and we and oh there's a dude right there but it's you see the same thing in uh Einzel River like right where we fight the uh dragonkin soldier and it's also right by one of these now, if we can get... I can't really tell exactly what's going on with the symbol thing. Kind of cool looking, though. I mean, it has to be like a giant, right? I mean, what else could it be, right? Is it? It's a giant figure. And he looks 
very regal, right? It's just the robes and stuff. It just it just feels important. Who else are you going to put in this giant chair crypt? Look how all the windows are sealed. There's no way into these buildings. Like, we're just jumping across rooftops and stuff. I might have made a mistake. I don't know. Maybe I'm not supposed to go this way. Maybe I go this way. There we go. Knight's Sacred Ground. What's significant about that name is the fact that this place is cast into, like, an eternal, like, artificial night. And there used to be a black moon that hung above the eternal cities before it was, like, shattered. Because we have little pieces that are used to make memory stones that were supposedly parts of that black moon. There's more of those silver tier deals. They're shooting crap at us. And... You know, it shouldn't be too surprising that you see them using their own bodies as weapons, right? They are kind of like an artificial life of source. It's a life form, but there's also like not, right? It's kind of a contradictory thing. And it can mimic other life forms. We can use it to give ourselves rebirth with Renala, you know, and a new life. Like hopefully it is us getting back up and not just the mimic tier being made into us. But then... Um, there's the idea that they're making these weapons, which isn't weird because we have picked up weapons that are said to have been crafted from them, right? So they are a material to be used for weapons as well. And there they go. No armor, though. Like, this one didn't mimic us. It's just, ooh, the two-handed just went for it, huh? Pretty vulnerable to bleed without any armor on. Look at that blue skin, silver hair. And you know what it's like? There is one of the uh, beginning starter classes or starting races. I don't remember what it's called right now for some reason. I'll put it on the screen. But they are supposed to, you know, have bled silver long ago. Like silver tears, silver blood. And what are we finding here? People with the same kind of like look to them that maybe could have, you know, be bleeding silver. They are silver tears. Still got the blue flame. It's and not consistent though. Like that little lamp is not doing that so maybe anytime we see those blue flames how we learned in the last video that the soldiers of the you know fallen soldiers of the hawk or whatever they burned the bones of their fellows burned the bones of the dead and they rediscovered the ghost flame which sealed their fate as far as like residing and being denizens of the underground so maybe anytime we see these blue flames it's not necessarily because it's underground, but it's because of the fuel that they're using. Because it's using the the dead, using the bones. That is what is made, giving it that blue flame color. Now we got the black wet blade. It's probably not going to say anything different than what we've already seen with all the other ones. Black wet blade, cipher engraved. Can use it for poison, blood, or occult. And what is behind this sealed thing and why is it sealed? Because I think the general idea is anytime you see these, uh, you know, sealed sections with little imps, and there's a pretty good view of that emblem on her back piece there. In some ways, it kind of reminds me of the axe emblem used for, like, Godfrey. Um, but anyways, uh, anytime you see these imp seals, right, it's always to, like, I mean, it's to seal. Kind of keep people out of things. Things that are, like, important, sacred, or forbidden, right? Hmm. The Mimic Tear Ashes. This spirit takes the form of the Summoner to fight alongside them, but its memory memory does not extend to imitating the Summoner's will. Mimic Tears are the result of an attempt by the Eternal City to forge a Lord. So they can make these things, but they couldn't make their will, right? Like, its will is its own. And there's another path right here. But it was their attempt to, you know, they were crafting these things, these artificial life, to make a Lord. And it's not the only thing that I think they've made, too, because we also had the Dragonkin soldiers, right, of Noxtella, where this is Nokron, then we've got Noxtella. All of them kind of getting the same, like, Nox or Nox uh, prefix idea to it, which is supposed to tie in with Knight. But they've been trying to craft this thing. Why would they want to craft their own lord? Well, like many of the other groups that we've encountered who are interested in having their own lords they want to have somebody who is going to champion them who's going to lift them up save them be their you know their rep their savior their will everything i just said there right there's some interesting dripping looking bead things there i've never really noticed those before looks kind of weird almost organic kind of coming off the trees like see it right there 
seems to be dripping from the tree thing. Is it like actually like a type of sap dripping down from it? The flowing hammer, mace shaped like a suspended metal droplet wielded by monks of the eternal city, forged from liquid metal from a silver tear. It is thoroughly tempered until hardened. So it's like a suspended metal droplet. See, what are we seeing here? Maybe suspended metal droplets dripping off of some tree thing, right? And how the other sacred tears are supposed to be coming from the Erd tree or maybe even minor Erd trees. Maybe these same things are coming off some other type of tree down here, right? And there's roots and things. Now we've heard of another type of tree as well, and it was the great tree, but like, where is it, right? If you've got something that's called a great tree, where's the great tree? It's not readily apparent from it for us right and then we got this giant ball which is interesting compared to you know like there's been all the other ball things that you can get from um that the the mages are summoning right and so you know a lot of the sorcery stuff has some has had some pretty big ties in with eternal city things and look there's that silver mist you know the night maiden's mist that originated with the maidens of the eternal city of nocron beneath Celia. No way. All right, Night Maiden Twin Crown. And see, this crown is different, right? It's got two pieces to it. They're a Night Maiden. Whenever we look at some of these statues, I don't know if we can see any around right here right now, but those other ones, they have a single crown to them. So this is a twin crown. Twin crowns worn by the Night Maidens of the Eternal City indicates the highest clerical rank and hides the eyes with silk. Long ago, the Nox invoked the ire of the greater will and were banished deep underground. Now they live under a false night sky, in eternal anticipation of their liege, of the coming age of the stars and their lord of night. So a high-ranking clerical, cleric, right? And hides the eyes of silk. That kind of, I feel like, ties in a little bit with like the, um, you know, we see with the prophets, they hide their eyes too because they saw things they shouldn't. So maybe like part of this hiding their eyes thing is to like you know prevent them from seeing things maybe there is some significance there i mean there's a lot of tie-ins with eyes in general in the game right uh but then they long ago long ago because obviously this is an old old civilization they invoke the ire of the greater will the greater will has a lot of big ties in here right with like the uh two finger vassals uh th that has tie-in with like choosing uh like demigods and stuff right and how they've uh set us on the path of becoming the elden lord and putting the other demigods to the sword so were these like were they previously followers of the greater will and that's and then they did something they shouldn't have and invoked the ire of the greater will and then got banished so i wonder what they did to invoke that ire and so now being living underground this is where they have that false knight and they're waiting for their lord, right? And we had a feeling they were looking for a lord because they've been trying to make one. They were trying to make one using these mimic tears. But obviously, it has not been successful. And now we got the advance here. Let's go ahead and summon our guy, Seamorg. Guarding some kind of item there onto the side as well. Now, interesting thing about these guys, right? When the ones that, like, it's these that transform, if you roll, see how it saps their HP, it's the same as a Night Maiden's Mist. Oh, you're a shield guy too. Gotcha. Uh, but yeah, it saps your HP because it's, you know, bad for you. Yeah, I mean, look at the silver roots and tree branches with leaves and stuff. It's just another kind of like mirror opposite to like the earth tree stuff where it's all gold and it's got the gold leaves, the plants nearby are infused with gold. All this is like a silver opposite to it and it makes a troll. Just like we saw with that one like little, uh, that one little noble guy or commoner he uh what he turned into he turned into a big old lion thing so now we get up here now underneath these chair crypts that's where you've been really seeing the various like items a lot of times it's been great glove ghost warts right ascending gate wonder where that could send us yeah hi bud finger slaying blade great glove or great ghost glove wart. Uh, look at that thing, nasty. I mean, it looks like a dagger, twisty, curved look to it. It's got that heelless look again, right? The hidden treasure of the eternal city of Nokron. A blade said to have been born of a corpse. 
This blood-drenched fetish is proof of the high treason committed by the Eternal City and symbolizes its downfall. It cannot be wielded by those without a fate, but it is said to be able to harm the greater will and its vassals made from corpse, but it can hurt the greater realm vassals. So it's that in itself is probably the treason committed by the eternal city. Like what is the high treason that they made a weapon from some corpse, right? A very metal thing to do that could harm the greater will and vassals. Now, what kind of, it had to have been some kind of important corpse. I would almost say, you know, something like the body of a god or something to that nature, right? And then that's, by making this, that's what sealed their fate and uh, got them banished, right? Yeah, that's how they would have invoked the ire and then banished deep underground. And because they're stuck there, that's when they're like waiting for their liege. So they were already wanting to get rid of the greater will and they wanted to end the age of the Erd Tree, maybe, and bring in a new age of stars and a, you know, they call their Lord of Night because they're underground now, huh? And I guess oftentimes the Erd Tree I would almost consider was like, it's not really the sun, right? It never really connects it to the sun, but it's often was like light, right? And it's not really nighttime at all with it. So where does this take us? Okay, it takes us right back there. Now there is another dagger, right? The Black Knife. Like, what was that used? That was used to kill. Uh, demigod godwin the golden right some kind of ritual made it on the oddly misshapen blade so like i always kind of thought that it was like the ritual made the dagger misshapen but this is saying a ritual performed on the oddly misshapen blade it's not like a ritual was performed on the blade and made it misshapen and it's imbued with the power of stolen rune of death hmm. so maybe like but the black knife seems like i mean we got one early right and we can totally use it. Whereas this has to be used by someone with a fate. So the that black knife is not enough to harm a, one of the two fingers. Because that's one of the vassals of the greater will. But Ronnie wants this. Which means she is against the greater will. And it's vassals, right? Let's go ahead and we're going to go back. And we're going to go turn in some of that stuff. I want to talk to EG first. Uh, because I don't think I've ever really gone to him first to be like, hey, look at what I've got. Like, see if he has anything to say uh, about Blythe still. Okay, so he doesn't have anything to say. Uh, something else I want to talk about, right? Since we're kind of talking about the uh, conspiracy message, whatever they tried to do in the Eternal Cities. Look at this uh, Nox Mirror Helm. Fashioned from crystal looking glass, one of the Eternal City's ritual implements, is worn by those committed to high treason and wards off the intervention of the greater will and its vassal fingers. So they made this and wore it to prevent intervention by the greater will and two fingers while wielding this finger slaying blade, something that could harm the greater will and stuff, right? And it functions in a similar way, I would say, to this gold needle, an unalloyed gold needle that could also ward off intervention by outer god. So I would very much say the greater will is an outer god because like, where is it? It's out there. And also what else did we get from uh, something? We got the outer order symbol. What does that do? Like, doom. Interesting. All right, there's Ronnie. Is she awake now? Administered the draft? No, 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 we don't want to do that. So why isn't she awake though? We can't give her this thing yet. Why can't we give it to her? So I want to know, with that thing from Blythe and EG said he had his own mission, talking about a traitor, is it Celibus? Did they No, he's still standing there. I don't know. So I'm about to tread into some slightly unknown territory, but I kind of want to kill him. Right? Because he's trying to do things to her and we don't want that to happen. And I don't agree with it. So can we kill him now? Like we, we, we can attack. I kind of want to do it. Yeah, we're going to attack him. Oh, what was that? That was really weird. Huh. That was really strange. Oh, she's not there. What? Oh, okay, I'm like, I'm really deep in uncharted territory. Like, I don't, I don't know what's happening. EG's gone too. What? Dude, that's not fair. All right, that's not fair, okay? I attacked him because he was trying to do some crazy plot, all right? 
that's really dumb. All right, so I think to fix this, we gotta drink, we gotta go up here and perform a uh, ritual of absolution. And look, what do we see? It's one of the night maidens. Well, not a night maiden, actually. Uh, wonder what her actual role is. We should probably try and get that helmet at some point, armor, in order to see what it does. And there's our mysterious figure man. His robes are actually kind of similar to there to theirs, right? Is he somehow like a Nox monk? Receive absolution. Your sins are absolved. Okay, thank you. All right. There's EG. All right, they're back now. All right. Please note that this is... Oh, talk. Yes. It was thee, not Ignore what I was going to say. Even in my slumber, I sensed it. It is in thy possession, is it not? The hidden treasure of Nokron. Yep. My thanks. Finally, all the pieces are in place. Soon must I begin my journey. Upon the dark path only I may tread. Dark path of the Empyrean, right? Ah, but before I leave, I must entrust thee with this. Take it. Carrion inverted statue. My discarded flesh lieth beyond the seal unlocked by it, upon which is carved the curse mark of thy desire. I can fathom what thy purpose might be. Neither of us is welcomed by the brighter path. I see. You may leave now. It was but brief. But thou gavest me fine service. Right, because this whole thing was us trying to get the uh, curse mark. Because we had the black knife print that Rajir was so interested in. The secret of the conspiracy. And then he wanted to know, like, the half of the the rune or something, right? And he said if it was held by her, she might have it. And she's all like, yeah, it's on my flesh, but it's not here. I'm not going to tell you where it's at. And so we offered it, you know, a little quid pro quo here. And uh, anything else? Thy purpose in approaching me was to obtain the curse mark, was it not? I mean, yeah. You may leave now. I too am to depart on a journey. Upon the dark path only I may tread. All right. Yeah, she said she could kind of maybe guess our purpose with the curse mark. Like, what are we going to do with it, though, right? Rajir is interested in it, but even then, he seems to just have a scholarly interest in it. So I'm not really sure, like, what's it, what's going to happen with us seeking it. But she says, you know, our path is also dark. And I mean, the finger readers have also said, like, any path we take is going to be laid with, uh, you know, misfortune and woe and tears, right? It's just the path has been set out for us, regardless of whether, like, which way we go. So I think... We can probably squeeze in going down here to do it, huh? Maybe we check on Rajir. We can let him know progress. The last time we checked on him, he was just like sleeping because he said he had the feeling that he was on the edge of a deep slumber. No, Rajir. Oh, it's bell bearing. Oh, dude. Rajir's letter. Dude, we were so close to getting it, bud. Oh. It's so awful because like when I found him before I went and I got the final thing and I was like, all right, I got it, but I'm here and I got there. Gone. Letter written in a trembling hand. I forgot to tell you, but it seems D has a younger brother. I heard he lies in a deep sleep in the aqueduct beside the eternal city of Nokron. And it said that he stood before the Prince of Death not far beyond that spot. So D has a brother. Now the armor says so as much, right? Twin brothers. Two bodies, two minds, one soul, inseparable, but they were separate. And he's in some kind of a deep sleep, is what he said, beside the eternal city of Nokron, which we were just at, in the aqueducts there. And there's lots of aqueduct stuff going on. But he stood before the Prince of Death, not far beyond there. And who is the Prince of Death? Let's take a look at this pustule real quick. Said that it came from the visage of the Prince of Death, he who used to be called Godwin, the first dead of the demigod, said to be buried deep under the capital at the Erd Tree's roots. Now see, right, we've seen the body for that pop up here in Stormvale, which is weird because he's supposed to be buried somewhere way up here at the roots of the Erd Tree underneath the capital. And this other spot he's talking about too is way over here. Again, nowhere near. I mean, like, yes, the roots can extend really far, but it's so far away that like, symbolically speaking it's just not the same you know what i mean and actually looking at these columns look at them. they do they look like severed tree trunks uh yeah so okay 
twin brother somewhere out there. So we got something left from Mirage here, which is great. Uh, let's see his equipment, though. I do like his. He's got some sweet style. Glintstone Sorcerer, Rajir's Pointed Hat, a sign of a heretical practitioner, strengthens Glintstone Sorcery skills. Okay. Rajir spent his entire life behaving with utter detachment. No one noticed the anger, grief, regret, or fear that existed along with it. Hmm. So I wonder what that, like, what was the anger, like, all those negative feelings, like, what was that towards? And he was a heretical practitioner. So he wasn't quite like them, even though he used Glintstone. Maybe that's why he was so interested. Like he, he was just interested, and that's why he, he became like a heretical practitioner. And he was like interested in blending all the things together, right? Glintstone Sorcerer Rajir's a traveling attire. Graced with an intricate aristocratic decoration, it strengthens Glintstone sorcery skills. It is super cool looking too. So maybe he was some kind of noble, huh? Noble for who though? Here's his bell bearing. And now look at the coloration. So like here's like this ghost glove wart pickers one, right? Some of them have been different, right? When we got um, the one uh, sorcerer, uh, shoot, I cannot remember his name now. Uh, he taught us a couple sorceries. We got him the key, went into the academy, right? His had uh, glintstone things on it. Now Rajir is also a sorcerer and it doesn't have any on there. But it's got some red thing, like the kind of look of it is kind of making me think like Deathroot because like what happened to him? He was afflicted by Deathroot. And some another thought I would like to think, right, I uh, had about death root, right? When it builds up, it kills you. All these like spiny root things kind of burst out a little bit from you and actually seem to come out of the ground as well and like lance you and you die. But it, it ties in with death root that comes from uh, Godwin and Godwin was not slain in body. He was slain in soul. So if it's the same kind of curse is it actually just killing our soul and our body would like technically live on maybe right we're gonna let eg know the good news maybe he'll have something to say this time oh, there you are. Good of you to drop by. okay have you heard? Lady Rani has departed on her journey y yeah she told me along the dark path of Imperium, from Rena's rise. oh she rena like Renala, maybe? Be without you. As Lady Rani's war counselor, and moreover, her childhood warden, I express my deepest gratitude. You and only you were Lady Rani's true champion. I mean, everybody did stuff that was important, right? It's, it's not fair to only lay it at my feet, even if we did do some of the big work. Thanks. Okay. Uh, let's check on freaking what's his name? Celavus. I'm sure he's going to be super stoked. Also, something I would like to say, right? We're at Ronnie's Rise. This whole place is called Three Sisters, and there are three towers. Rena, Ronnie, and then Celavus. He's the preceptor. He's a a guy so like this third one has been completely overtaken so what was the original name because i that can't have been the original name so and it all one of the other things also implies that there were multiple princesses i don't remember what item said it right but there were multiple princesses and uh ronnie is the last one so what happened to the other two and i assume this one's was rena was one of them it's kind of named after renala ronnie and then this one but notice how, too, earlier, when we talked to EG after defeating Radon and we were talking about Jaren, he mentioned how he had some task, an old promise to be reminded of, and a carrion weed that needed to be stamped out. And since the stars are now moving, a certain sorceress was divested of her immortality, right? She could die again. Now, whose fates in particular were, like, held in the stars? the Carrion royal family. So, perhaps there is some, like, Carrion princess lingering out there, a Carrion family member, like, waiting about. Oh, look at that. 
Look at his pose. You know what it reminds me of? His puppets. Celavus's bell bearing. Preceptor big hat, preceptor long gowns, trouser, all that preceptor. See what I was talking about? Look how this one has glintstone stuff coming off of it. And I should say, even though I was like, oh, death root kind of thing, it really does kind of, I mean, I see maybe a tiny smidge of it, but it also looks like blood maybe on there. Hmm. Large hat with some movements of stars drawn on the inside of the brim, worn by magic preceptors who served the Carrion Royals. Increases mind to the detriment of stamina. Glintstone sorcerers are the descendants of astrologers, a fact that the Carrion remains aware of, even if their fate has long been severed from the stars. All right, so yeah, I mean, just like we said with the astrologers, how they came down, the original ones, they were in the mountaintops of the giants so that they could view the stars closer, and the Carrions remembered that, you know, even if they couldn't do anything about it, really. Examine. Oh, you can still get stuff from them. Weird. I guess they, because they didn't want to lock you out of getting things. It is kind of disturbing. Oh, look at that. So he... Oh, he's red blood. That's weird. It should be silver. So he had these puppets. So maybe he was the one controlling all the puppets in the manor. Using it as like part of the defenses, right? And then they turned on him. Dolores, the sleeping arrow puppet. Now, who? somebody had to have controlled them, right? Because they, they don't just get up on their own. So who would have done it? My only saw is Ronnie, spirit of a handsome archer who dressed in the style of a man. Called the silent hunter by some, she fires St. Trina's arrows from her short bow. Dolores once belonged to the round table hold, where she was both a critic and a friend of Kitty and the All-Knowing. It was because of her that he and Celavis went their separate ways. So here's my thought there, right? Uh, and this is using some things that we technically didn't like discover right the concoction that he would have given us that he gave us to give to uh nefeli would turn her into a puppet and he would then have a creepy puppet for celibus right now when we talk to gideon gideon's aware of it and he's like he calls him he's like i, I don't remember what he called him the like freaking asshole i don't know and he's like, yeah, do you want to listen to him or do you want to pull one over on him? Now, why did they like separate? Because it seemed like they probably worked together because they both are kind of scheming and creepy. Uh, it's because of Dolores, where she was a friend of Gideon, even though she was a critic. But now she's a puppet. So Celavus ended up turning her into a puppet because he couldn't control himself. And he was a freaking creep. And then that's what separated Gideon from him and why he's willing to turn one over on him. Now, where's Blythe, though? Right? He's been missing. You're talking about finding a traitor and stuff. I mean, I guess he could have been the one wiping them out, like taking care of them. But it doesn't feel right, right? This, like, we don't bump into him. The one had puppets who got rid of him. The, uh, it looked like Celibus himself got turned into a puppet. So, like, it doesn't feel like that was something that Blythe did. So, where could he possibly be at? And I don't know how. You're supposed to figure this out on your own, except by just random, dumb chance. The Howling. Forlorn Hound. Everjail. I guess maybe you could be, like, walking by and then hear it, you know? Like, it's just, again, just random chance. Like, how would you hear this? Anything? No? Don't open it. So it sounds, I mean, it sounds like he's trapped literally below it. Even though whenever we 
normally like you know interact with it we are like teleported into like an alternate realm that could be just a gameplay thing and maybe the jail is literally like a hole down in there and it's got some weird flipped mirror version of it upside down uh but let's confront eg eg's all like yeah he's gonna cause nothing but trouble for lady ronnie and even though blize is just like my whole purpose in being is to serve her so like what does he mean like he's like i'm her shadow and eg just straight up lied to us about it too why is blythe in the ever jail So maybe she is an Empyrean. So, let me read that mask again. Because I feel like there was something that said he was, like, the adopted, like, son as well. So, he was a gift by the Two Fingers to them, to Rani, as a shadow because she's an Empyrean. Like, he kind of says as much that she is an Empyrean. But it's really, like, not, like, I mean, he's helping her, right? He has been helping her. But it's a failsafe against betrayal against the two fingers right if she should actually willfully go against him then he would go mad and try and do it right and her whole thing has been to like somehow resist them she's got a finger slaying blade she slayed her own flesh right so it's interesting like at what point would he flip you know it hasn't happened yet so when is it supposed to happen now unfortunately i think we're just gonna have to leave him in there because like what blize is saying or what eg is saying kind of makes sense like we could let him out but if he does decide to like try and stop ronnie like that would be a problem right uh, but that's where we're gonna call it right here i think this will be a good stopping point uh next one we're gonna go into this divine tower we're gonna get that curse mark and it's whatever else is happening there but thank you guys for watching i hope you guys enjoyed it and i always appreciate it when you check it out but until the next one take care